Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. The alleged mastermind of a crime ring specializing in stolen goods had a lot to say in court today. As rain moves out of the area, it's taking the humidity with it. Your updated forecast just moments away. A Wayne County deputy arrested on suspicion of drunk driving, and tonight we're told he did not go quietly. Good to have you with us for Local 4 News at 6. The officers who took Robert Fontana into custody say he was drunk, speeding, and had a gun. He never made it to the police station for booking because he allegedly found a way to get his handcuffs in front of him, then bit officers who tried to restrain him. Priya Mann has a story from Auburn Hills. Auburn Hills police say that deputy was flying down 75, hitting speeds of 90 miles per hour, at one point almost hitting another vehicle. He was pulled over near M24, and that's when things spiraled out of control. Not only driving drunk, but having a gun is completely dangerous. Police say Deputy Robert Fontana Jr. told them he was armed with a gun and gave it over, but became defiant during his arrest early Saturday morning. On his way to get booked, Fontana was able to outmaneuver his handcuffs. It's actually very surprising. So when I actually learned of the situation and found that he actually slipped from under his feet, the cuffs, uh, it told me that one thing is actually pretty flexible. Something that's extremely difficult to do. Auburn Hills police say the 27 year old deputy then tried to choke himself with the cuffs. Cops pulled over again and got Fontana out of the squad car. Police say he became combative and tried pulling away, even biting a few officers arms. They were able to restrain the deputy and strapped him to a gurney where he was taken to the hospital to get his blood alcohol level checked. You know, police officers, law enforcement in general are not excluded and the same repercussions, the same consequences will happen across the board for everyone. And the Lake Orion man only joined the department back in 2012. Officials tell me he had just a few minor disciplinary issues in that time. Now he's facing three misdemeanor counts of resisting and obstructing arrest, possession of a firearm while intoxicated, and the charge of drunk driving is pending. Reporting live from Midtown, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. So Priya, uh, suspended without pay, but uh, still employed then, right? Yeah, that's still up in the air. Officials are saying they want to wait on the results of that investigation by Auburn Hills Police. Right we saw some uh, peaks of sunshine here today. Late because it was uh, really rainy for most of the day. Let's check in with Ben. You thought that sun was never coming after the uh, first <laughs> half of our uh, Tuesday, but things have shaped up fairly nicely for most of us. We still have some light showers here north of the city. This is not going to amount to much. It's not going to last very long either. You can see they're on their way out and just not much left of the uh, showers and some thunderstorms that we saw earlier today. The other thing that there's not much left of is the humidity. Even though we've got muggy conditions across most of southeast Michigan, you can see some of the dry air already in central parts of the state and there's a lot more in the UP and further to the north. It's on its way down here and we'll get to enjoy that a little bit later tonight. Not necessarily during the evening hours, but we will be dry out. Temperatures falling into the 60s as we head towards midnight tonight. Humidity goes away. We'll tell you how long that stays away and also take a look at your weekend forecast. Don't forget to download our local forecasters app. It does have interactive radar, severe weather alerts and a lot more right in the palm of your hand. Download it for free in your app store by searching WDIV. Kim. A West Side neighborhood is shaken up tonight over the shooting death of a Detroit firefighter inside his home. Police tape blocked off parts of the neighborhood Tuesday as people gathered outside to find out what was going on. Local 4's Larry Spruill is live at the home and Larry neighbors say this is normally a quiet neighborhood. It is Kimberly. I talked to neighbors who lived on this block for years. One woman tells me she lived here for 40 years. So the fact that a firefighter was shot and killed inside his home has them ready to pack up and go. Crime scene tape, police cars and fire trucks blocked Kimberly Carter from getting to her mother's house Tuesday morning. Horrible. It's very horrible. You know, because you don't know. It's that uncertainty, Kimberly Carter tells me, she doesn't like. It's very alarming. My mother is elderly. I mean, wouldn't you be concerned? Police say 29-year-old Jack Wiley II was shot and killed inside his home Tuesday morning. He was a firefighter with the Detroit Fire Department. His sister found the body upstairs when he did not show up to work. Fire Commissioner Eric Jones. His dad is a retired uh, senior chief um, with a lineage of firefighters. Um, his sister, I believe, is a 911 operator. Um, 
just a family of public servants. Family members and friends on scene full of emotions as they learn the news. He was just a dream child. He would be a son that you would want to have your son. Meanwhile, neighbors are considering moving as their only option for safety. The police presence and then what? You know, you're going to have to, what, put business around your or property? You know, it's just horrible. And we saw police walking up and down this neighborhood and going from house to house, knocking on doors. Of course, if you know anything about this shooting, you're asked to call police. We're live on the Choice West Side tonight. Larry Sproul, Local 4. Larry, you mentioned police have been knocking on doors, asking questions. Do they have any leads? Well, Kimberly, as of right now, the only lead that they have to go off of is that the suspect stole his car from his house and drove it. They found that car around 3.30 this morning on Detroit's southwest side. The car was set on fire. Just senseless. All right, Larry, a Detroit police officer is recovering tonight after accidentally shooting herself. Happened shortly after noon on Artesian Street on the city's west side. Local 4 has learned the officer was in her car with another female officer when an argument broke out between the officer and her boyfriend. Police say the woman shot herself in the arm with her service weapon. She was rushed to the hospital where she is listed in serious condition. Half million dollars worth of stolen goods found in storage units, a warehouse, and homes earlier this month in Detroit and Dearborn. Investigators say it is evidence of an organized theft ring and several suspects faced a judge today. Jermont Terry was there as things got pretty interesting in court, Jermont. They sure did, Devin. Now, this crime spree spans several months, and it involves at least five people. Four of them appeared in court this afternoon, including the accused ringleader. Now, while in court, one of the people accused of stealing some of the goods told the judge she had no idea that she was a part of this organized crime spree. Earlier this month, Sky 4 was over a storage facility in Dearborn, where investigators say they recovered more than a half million dollars of stolen merchandise. Items prosecutors say was taken from CVS and Walgreens stores throughout Wayne County. This type of crime is the reason some businesses in Wayne County and other counties cannot operate. The accused ringleader, Nafez Muhammad, is the only person out on bond. He faces more than 30 counts, including organized retail crime. Muhammad stands accused of filling that storage unit with stolen items, then reselling them online. Prosecutors say he had up to four people going into the stores, taking anything they could grab. They believe Victoria Henderson was one of them. She barely misses a day, sometimes attacking businesses, separate businesses, seven times a day. Now Henderson is behind bars facing more than 50 counts, and she told the court she didn't know about the crime spree. You know, I never know nothing about my organized crime because I'm by myself. So okay. I don't understand how they say organized crime when I'm by myself. Okay, I don't want you talking about the threat. Threat. I don't, I don't. Henderson in her arraignment claims she worked with detectives to bring down Muhammad. Well, what if I was promised not to go to jail? The detective promised me not to go to jail as they got Muhammad. And now Muhammad is out on bond, and she and the others are still behind bars with a bond they can't afford. Can you please just lower my bond? Okay. Because I don't have $5,000, and all I got is seven kids. Now, it took more than two hours to get everyone involved arraigned on these charges. Also charged this afternoon was Valencia and Dion Davey. They are both from Detroit and appear to be brother and sister. If convicted on all of the charges, the four people arraigned today could spend anywhere from 20 to 30 years behind bars. Reporting live, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Jermont, any idea really how long this was all going on? Yeah, Devin, I mean, we're talking a half million dollars, and according to prosecutors, this all happened between March and July of this year. So a very short time, yeah. frame, time frame, but a lot of items stolen, according to prosecutors. Just a couple of months. All right, Jermont. Meanwhile, two Macomb County men facing charges in connection with an assault during an attempted home invasion. Police say David Janowski of Romeo and Michael Lavelle of Chesterfield broke into a home at a mobile home community in Huron Township. Both men allegedly attacked the men inside before taking off. They were arrested a short time later. A judge set their bail at $50,000. Let's see what Lester Holt and his team are working on for nightly news tonight, immediately following this broadcast. Quite a national news day. Lester joins us from New York with a preview. Hey, Lester. Hey, Kim and Devin. Yeah, it's been a busy one. President Trump implicated by his former lawyer as Michael Cohen pleads guilty to violating campaign laws with that Stormy Daniels payoff. 
This as Mr. Trump's former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, is found guilty by a jury of his own crimes. We'll have all that when we see you in just a few minutes for NBC Nightly News. But for now, back to you in Detroit. Plenty to drill down on there. All right, Lester, we'll see you here in about 20 minutes. Meanwhile, still ahead here at 6, a sure sign that fall is not too far away. We're going to take you to one of the only cider mills around that is already open for business. <laughs> All right, and uh, let's check in with Dr. McGeorge. Well, there's a troubling trend involving obesity. Coming up, why fewer teens are trying to lose weight, even as teen obesity numbers continue to climb. 